Here we're going to look at writing the equation of a sinusoid using our calculator. Um, so here we have a, a function and it is written as the sum of two trig functions. Um, and so what we're going to do is just write it in write it in this form here. So actually before we even consider that let's go Let's look at the graph of this so that we're assured that we can actually write this like this. So let's go put in the calculator. 4 sine 2x plus 3 cosine 2x. All right, and now I'm going to hit graph, and I do this for a reason. If you if you notice that your you graph a trig function and you just get a straight line, well, what that means is you are not in radian mode. So you have to be in radian mode whenever you're graphing trig functions like sine and cosine. And now let's just try it. I don't know what the win the appropriate window we'll deal with in a second. So as you can see, it this is a sinusoid. It looks like a sine or a cosine graph. So the point is, I graphed this, but because it, its graph looks like a sinusoid, I can rewrite the equation like this. I just need to find the amplitude. I need to find my B value and my shifts. So we're going to look at how to do that with the calculator. Now, I really recommend uh, doing this um, by sketching yourself a little graph. And it doesn't have to be a really nice graph. It just needs to kind of get the job done. Uh, so let's see if I can find what I'm looking for here. Here we are. I just want to draw a little sketch. All right, so I'm going to write this. I want to write this as a sine equation. Okay, so in order to do that, I've got to find a sine shape, as we've talked about before. So um, let's get a setup, though. Let's get a little setup. So if I'm going to write this as a sine graph, then it's going to be written as f of x equals, so I'll need to know my a value. I'm writing it as a sine. Uh, I need to know my b value. I need to know the, d, uh, the c value. And the d value. All right, now let's find a sine shape. There's tons of them, right? There's tons of them. There is um, there's one right here. There's one right here. And there's one right here too. So let's find that shape. And I think what I'm, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. And so in order to do that, I'm going to hit zoom in, number two. And I'm going to zoom in at the point zero, 0, Okay, now that might be a little bit too zoomed in, but you can see at least it zooms me into the to the the beginning of that sine shape, which is a little to the left of the origin. I'm going to go back now. I'm going to change my window. I I do want to see like the whole full shape. So the x values are fine. I think we might have to make them a little bigger, but I'm going to make this go up to like I'm going to make this go down to like from negative six to six. Okay, and again, playing around with the window is something you're going to need to do your, on your on your own. Um, and all right, so here's the sign shape right here, but I'm going to make it the window go a little bit to the right on the x on the x-axis, so I can see like a full. So there it is. So I got a full sign shape right here. All right, so let's do our analysis on that shape. Uh, I'm going to find the maximum value here, and the way I do that is I do second calc. 
max, which is 4. And even though the words are in the way, remember, you just want to go a little bit to the left of the peak, a little to the right, enter, enter. And so 5 is my max. And that is my amplitude as well, right? Because if the distance between this mid this midline and uh, the max is 5, well, then we just found the amplitude. Now, that, of course, is assuming that the midline is the x-axis, and it is, because, look, if we calculate the minimum, if you calculate the minimum here, you're also going to get 5. Now, this is just a consequence of when you add to uh, two trig functions that have the same period. See, y goes down to negative 5. Okay, so the amplitude is definitely 5. And we get that by finding the max. So, oops, we're going to put a 5 there. Okay, let's talk about, so that means that there's no vertical shift. And there really is never going to be for these problems. So this is almost a little unnecessary. This will never really apply. When you add two, two sine or cosine graphs and the result is a sinusoid, um, there's, ne there's never going to be a vertical shift. So we don't have to worry about that. Horizontal shift we do need to worry about. So there's where the sine graph starts. We need to find that point, that zero, because normally the sine graph starts at zero, zero, but it got sh it's a little bit to the left now. So we've got to calculate that zero. A little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. So negative 0.322. So the graph got shift to the left, 0.322. And so if it got shifted to the left, we all know that means I'm going to put plus 0 0.322. So notice we're not really doing anything that different than what we've done before looking at a graph. The difference is we're, we're using our calculator picture so the values aren't always so nice as, as opposed to just a, a nice um, picture or graph. Now actually I, I made this whole I mean I made this whole uh, graph here and I'm not even using it. Um, that's the point negative 0.322 Zero and it's a little bit a little bit inaccurate of a sketch. So it's probably more like that, but uh, the point is it's it's just you know if you 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 don't want to forget where those those points are. So sometimes it's nice to just label them yourself. Uh, on a little on a little sketch, and again, you don't need to do all, but just a little, just enough to get the answer. So now that value, that's always the hardest one. Remember, that's not the period; it's a it's a, a value that relates to the period, and it relates via this formula, which we've looked at. The period is two pi over p. So we've got to go find the period. Now, how do you find the period? Well, it's the length. It's the uh, horizontal length of one cycle. So we need to find the distance between this point and that point. Well, we already figured out that zero, so what we have to do is find out that zero there, because that's where one cycle ends. So we'll calculate that. Two point eight uh, two. So that's two point eight two zero. So if I want the period, I need to do two point eight two minus negative three point two two. That's this distance. Right? The period is that distance. So to get that distance, we need to subtract 2.82 minus negative 3, 
a negative 0.322. And you'll notice you get 3.142. Now, we round it a little bit, and that should look suspiciously close to a number we know. And I hope it, you guys realize that that is just the number pi. Okay, so b is pi. I'm sorry, the period is pi. b is not pi. We're finding, we're finding b. Okay, well, what this means, if you cross multiply, b equals 2. All right, and we're all done. And it's no surprise, I mean, it's really actually no coincidence that there were twos here and here, and our b value has a two as well. That's actually not a coincidence. Okay, that'll always happen. So where are we? So we know uh, how to graph this. Make sure you're in radian mode. Play around with the window. Find an appropriate sign shape. Uh, find the amplitude by finding the max. Find the phase shift by finding the zero that begins your shape. And your period, you actually, uh, the B value, rather, you get for free because it's the same as these two. Okay? Um, and I think that'll just about do it.